Hey again guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com um, Today I'm going to just do a quick review uh, about um, Book of Memories, Silent Hill Book of Memories on the Vita. Uh, I have yet to beat it, I'm only up to like in the second or third set of missions. Uh, they call the, each set of missions as a zone and I think within each, or no, yeah, every mission is a zone within a big area like uh, the first area is fire. So you have to fight a fire guardian at the end of it. So uh, they're called zone one, two, and three, and then that all encompasses the fire realm. Um, people bash the shit out of this game. It got some mediocre to bad reviews. It's kind of like Diablo or Dungeon Hunter if you've played that on the Vita or on your phone. It's a top-down action RPG. It's got, I'd say, survival elements because the the health packs are scarce. You also have to um, fix your breakable weapons, and the we the item you need to fix them is a wrench. It's called a, like a tool or something, and those are kind of scarce. So the further you get along, it seems the more difficult. Obviously, it gets it ramps up. So that's cool. The survival element's a little. The horror element. I mean, it's it's Diablo with a Silent Hill skin. So you're gonna fight nurses. You're gonna fight um, what else? Pyramid Head and the Butcher. I fought the Butcher uh, a few times from uh, Origins. He's pretty difficult, but he's, you know it's interesting. So there are cool things that do tie into Silent Hill. There's little nods to the other games in the series, which I like. Um, the game is pretty much, you know, like I said, like Diablo. It's like an action RPG top-down. There's very limited character creation or character customization when you start. Um, you do, you can buy more accessories to dress up your guy. Like I know you can get a pyramid head mask. They said you can get a. Uh, I have like a Hannibal Lecter mask right now on the bottom of my face and like a top hat. So you can change yourself. I don't think it's going to be completely like full-blown, you know, uh, Fantasy Star Online or Ragnarok Odyssey or whatever Skyrim customization of your character. I don't think that's going to ever happen. But there is downloads, so I mean, hopefully in the future there's downloadable content that lets you maybe add more or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I recommend playing it with, with more people. It's online, which is cool. Sadly, it's not drop-in, drop-out. I touched upon this in my previous video about my Vita games. It's not drop in, drop out, and it's. Uh, I would definitely recommend using voice to group chat because it, otherwise you have to use the D-pad and do like preset commands like help me and follow me and all this type of crap. Um, the difficulty ramps up. I mean, there the the thing is there's like one save point I think in every level so far, and then there's a side quest in every level where I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong. The demon Val Valatel Valatiel from the from what was he in three I think he um I don't know if he was in one I think he was mentioned in one but uh, he was in three or at least they mentioned him in three um, <clears throat> he at the beginning of every mission gives you like a side quest like kill every uh, every bad guy in, in the board or find all the such and such and if you do it when you get to the end he pops up kind of startles you at first but he pops up and he gives you a weapon or a cool artifact you can equip to your character and upgrade your guy you do gain levels, so you can upgrade your character over time and get better strength and dexterity and agility, and they all have different things they do. You also have this thing called power moves, where you, you hold the R button and you push whatever corresponding button, like, uh, I think, if you wiggle the, the analog stick on the left, he, like, does a spin move and spins in a circle with his weapon, and you can bash the shit out of everything. Um, you also have a... Um, by the way, power moves aren't unlimited. You have to... Like, it's almost like experience. Every time you fight enough guys, you get another power move that you can do, and then you have to get one again if you if you use it. Um, what was the other thing? There's a karma system. So when you kill a bad guy, they drop blood on the floor. There's red blood and there's white blood. Red is, is bad and white is good. So there's six endings, I believe, uh, and a joke ending, and I think even a UFO ending, unless they tie that into the joke again. The karma system is pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about it is that um, sometimes you're fighting something, you're in the heat of the moment, and you walk over something by mistake and you pick up a karma or blood that you didn't want to pick up. Um, like I'm going for a good ending this time, so I'm trying to be like good and pick up all the white blood. You, there's also a power move that changes everyone's blood in the room, so when you kill them, you can turn the blood to white if you're looking, if you need white, if they're all red. I, I haven't really figured out how you'd know if, um, what their blood is beforehand, unless I just haven't noticed it yet. Um... The thing that does frustrate me is, um, well, first of all, it's not drop in, drop out. You have to start a game and then get everyone into the room and then all that stuff. The other thing that I don't like about the uh, multiplayer 
is that only the host can save the level progression, uh, how far along they are in the game. Everyone else just saves experience, items, and weapons, and you know the levels they gain for their character. So that's cool, but it sucks that only the host saves the progression. So if I play through the whole game with a friend, he didn't beat it, or he didn't. He's not going to get the ending, I guess. Only I'm going to get the level progression portion of it. So that kind of anno is annoying. But also, like I said, the difficulty ramps up. So while I was playing it, I got to like this stage, and I was really having a hard time. And I got to the end of it, but I wanted to try and go for the side quest. And I ended up fighting a butcher, and I, al I almost killed him, and then he hit me, killed me in one hit. I died, and there was no save point. So I started all the way back to being in that level, back at the previous level for my character. I was level 8. I got dropped down to level 7, because that's what I was when I started the level. So stuff like that kind of annoys me, but it's it it's got that more survival element, so I guess that's good in a way uh, to some. The uh, Like I said, the customization is a little low, but I do like it in general. Um... The needlers, the bad guys, the needlers are like these big crab looking things from Homecoming are annoying as shit. I mean, I, I hate them. You have to actually like strafe around and hit them from behind. Very annoying. Um, I've died a couple times with them. I'm trying to think what else. I'm looking over because I wrote a couple notes down to remember myself. Um, the upgrades are cool. I like that you can upgrade your character. I like that you pick up artifacts and make your eyes like have different abilities or different strengths. There's a shop in the game and it's run by the I can't think of his name right now, but he is the mailman from Downpour, the uh, the older black fellow in the mailman outfit that comes and delivers you letters in Downpour. So that's really cool. Um, you can buy weapons and upgrades and accessories from him. You can get an upgrade to carry more items, stuff like that. Um, I think if they tweak the game a little bit, especially with the drop in, drop out. I don't know if they can tweak that. Then I think it'd be like great. It's it's very good. I like it. I give it like a seven, seven and a half. I really enjoy it. It just has a couple quirks. I think it it needs to be tweaked doesn't need a complete overhaul. And as long as you can go into it not thinking it's a survival horror Silent Hill game and you can just go into it thinking it's a action RPG with a Silent Hill facade, I think you'd like it. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, the puzzles. The puzzles don't really do it for me. Uh, at the end of every stage you get to a puzzle and you have to pick up these items throughout the stage to complete the puzzle. There's also a note that helps you complete the puzzle. So. For instance, it's, it's always a, like a puzzle where you move things around. So it'll show you like a, a square with some squares are blocked out and some have openings. So if there'll be like, let's just say, five statues you pick up that look like children. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. The note might say something to the effect of five babies. So you know you, had, you needed five of them. Uh, children coming from the east, strong to weak. So you'd have to start from the east point on the puzzle going to the west and strong to weak obviously means big to small so when you place them all you hear a chime you beat the level and you get this it's called memory residue memory residue is money so you use that money to buy items and weapons and first aid kits from the store um, the puzzles just don't really do it for me they, they're a little annoying and if you don't pick up the note or you don't pick up all the items you need for the puzzle you can't really finish it there's a hint system, like a lever next to it, that you can pull down, and it tells you what items you have wrong on the board, on the puzzle. But that drops the memory residue every time you pull it. So I don't do that. I just get the note and try and I just trial and error the shit out of it until I get it. Um, trying to think. The ideas are really interesting. I think it's a good jump off point. I give it about a seven, seven and a half. Like I said, I like it. I think if you like Dungeon Hunter and you want a, like a um, grinding kind of experience with friends or something, or even alone, even though I think alone it gets a little too difficult, uh, you'll like it. So, Silent Hill Book of Memories, not not uh, as bad as everyone's making it out to be. If, uh, I don't know, if you have any more questions or anything about it, leave a comment, I'll be f glad to uh, chime in. I love talking to all the people that watch my videos, and thank you for watching them, because my small little channel is just a lot of fun to do, so I appreciate it. So that's about it. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com signing out. This is going to be my last Silent Hill video for a while, unless uh, a new game comes out or something. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'll probably maybe jump back to the retro stuff, the Sega CD or the 32X titles. But I'm sure I'll get some new stuff in there too. So um, thanks for watching. Be good.